Test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to APQC's October 2019 KM webinar. Today's session will feature some of our enterprise level recipients of APQC's 2019 Excellence in Knowledge Management Award. Before we get started, just a few things to keep in mind. You can tweet about today's webinar using the hashtag KMAPQC. All lines are in listen only mode. But if you have a question, you can enter your question at any time in the Q&A window at the right of your screen for us to ask live during today's call. You will also receive a follow-up email no later than this coming Monday with links to the slides and the full recording from today's webinar. And at this time, I'm going to pass the webinar over to Cindy Huber. Thank you so much. It is so great to be here with you all today. This is just a fun moment for me today. It may be the highlight of my entire day, week, month, can I go on and on, but I'm thrilled to be with you all and thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of information to cover. Um, you are here to not only hear from me, but to hear from some of our uh, uh, people who were awarded excellence in KM in early May. Let me give you guys a little bit of, let me do a little bit of stage setting for you and I'll tell you what we're going to do. You're going to hear a little bit about how organizations achieve, achieve excellence. And in this, earlier this year, we launched the Excellence in Knowledge Management Program and Award to recognize mature, sustainable, dynamic knowledge management programs that are delivering significant value to their organizations that they support. The award is actually based um, on an evaluation that is done. It's aligned to our knowledge management levels of KM maturity. It has an assessment some of you have been there, done that, and taken it, but you assess yourselves across 12 capabilities in, a, in great detail. And our program actually recognizes organizations that achieve, achieve the highest levels of maturity. And this year, our inaugural year, we recognize 13 organizations, KM programs, that actually received the award. Now, what all does that mean for us? Well, today it means that we get to be among some of the best and the brightest. I might as well just go ahead and yes, I am biased. I've known all of these organizations and the people that are joining me um, for a while and have had the opportunity to work with them. So in May, when we looked at these 13 organizations, we said, do you think in the fall we can catch up with you again and just continue to learn from you? And they all said yes. So we're actually starting with three organizations that were recognized as our enterprise award winners for excellence in KM. I'm so honored to be joined by representatives from these organizations. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them, but here you see Padma Bhamidapati. She is the lead principal of branding for Emphasis. Alan Volter, who runs their knowledge management process and workflow at Schlumberger and a lot more. And Sana Taylor, who is the service-wide KM program lead for the U.S. Internal Revenue Service. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. And as all of you can see, this group represents a very diverse set of organizations in terms of global locations, the industries that they serve, their focus, their target audience. You can just imagine all of this for the knowledge services they have. They have also been giving, very giving of their time and knowledge. We have asked them to do so many things for us, all the way from case studies, interviews, panel discussions, breakout sessions at our conference in the April-May time frame. So they've done a lot today. So Padma, Alan, and Sanav, thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for joining us today. So the one thing I want to talk about and get set the stage for what you're going to hear from these organizations today, this is a catch up, right? We get to do a little coffee talk. But one of the things that I want to share with you are some of the ways that they continue to evolve their programs. Now, given what I just said and all of you looking at this wave, a very large wave, you're saying, okay, Cindy, I thought we were going to hear all good things, and you are. 
But one of the things that we noted across all of the programs that we studied in depth from these award winners is that they're just able to survive waves that look like this. Um, they don't look at knowledge management as a one and done project. This is a journey for them. Some of them have been on this journey for 25, 30 years. And they look at enabling the flow of knowledge with all the changes of a business, all the things that happen to it as a continuing value proposition and a continuing journey. So we're going to talk about some of the things that they've done to survive the waves. And all of us go through changes. I think we just have to recognize that they happen faster and faster. Cycles come. Sometimes they're very dramatic. Sometimes they're unnerving. And yes, sometimes a little disappointing. But there's always that anticipation of what if and how do we change and how do we adapt to ride this one out, make ourselves stronger and better for the next wave that, of course, is going to be there. So even as you start thinking about your knowledge management program and what you're going to hear from these organizations from sort of the beginning of time, we have case studies on them to where they are now and what they've done since May, even the best knowledge processes, tools, and approaches um, can quickly become outdated, out of step with what the business, what's happening in the business. And these are just a few things that are going on in all of your businesses today. But the programs with the most staying powers are those that have both the, the courage and the agility to shake things up, to really challenge the status quo, to uh, change foundational methodologies to embrace the new and take things on. So the good news is that these organizations have really taken their experience and shared those with us. And what we've highlighted, and this is quite, we have this as an executive summary as well as a very detailed white paper that was done by our research group led by Lauren Trees, our principal research leader. Um, we've identified and isolated um, some enduring best practices, but fresh practices for KM excellence. I'm going to just highlight these for you. You can read about them in more detail, but I want you to have this as a foundation as you begin to listen to what our award winners have been up to and what they see for the future. So these are some of the themes. First of all, you have to focus your KM resources on where they are going to drive the most value. You're going to be asked to do a lot of things. Where is it going to get the biggest bang for your buck? The other piece is to position a knowledge management as an internal consultant. This is something we learned from them, and they're, they're providing services, and they're a true partner to the business. The third thing is, yes, there is transformation happening every day. As I just said, embrace the, dis, the disruption. Don't be afraid to take ownership and put yourself at the table, and all of these organizations really take that philosophy to put themselves forward. Um, we have all learned over time and we're quickly recognizing how important knowledge management is as a shared responsibility. You have to have your business partners engaged. You have to make sure that people are responsible across the workflow, not only your leaders, the managers, sponsors, but also people who are engaged in the workflow. Measure because it does matter. and. You want to always focus on data, um, fueling the fire. You're going to see a lot of things that people are doing with measurement and really aligning themselves to the business at the get-go so they can impact not just the activity of collaboration and connection and sharing, but also the bottom line of business. And then finally, just the opportunity to rebrand yourself, to take a step back, collect ideas, best practices, reimagine what this is going to look like, when things start getting stagnant and your stamina wanes, you have to do this. So hopefully that gives you just a little bit of insight and foundation of some of the things you're going to hear today. So let me tell you just a little bit more about these three organizations, just to remind some of you were at the conference with us and heard a lot. Hopefully a lot of those of you who are members on have gone in and looked at their case studies. But as I said, you can see that all of these are 
organizations are very different, as I said earlier. They have different goals for the business, different goals for knowledge management, but each really does focus on what matters. And for emphasis, it was about reducing the level of effort in the business by making their knowledge anticipatory. They could push it out there when people need it. And while they took this high tech touch to really scale, what you're going to hear from Padma is the human touch. Yes, she has been in the U.S. She is she is based in Asia, but she in India. But she has been in the U.S. for two weeks, going around and making sure that high touch is there, and she really begins to understand what her users need to continually evolve the services and the approaches and tools that supports emphasis ability to be anticipatory. Our U.S. Internal Revenue Service, they're about cultivating a well-equipped and engaged workforce and being there to respond to tackling one of their biggest challenges, a shrinking budget, doing more with less. So the efficiencies, the effectiveness, um, reducing the risk that may abound with that, and to really engaging and enhancing the workforce level of skills and interest to be able to service their customer, the taxpayer. And then, of course, Slumberger, who has been at this for a very long time. The journey has been long, right, Alan? And their approach has always been, because I've had glimpses into their program for so many years, about or enhancing organizational performance. Yes, they look at by the numbers of capturing, sharing, but they get very serious when they see how their collective knowledge is applied, not only to make optimal, optimal decisions in real time, but to solve problems. Their field services solve problems in a very efficient, quick way with SMEs and a triage of people involved to help get to what the client needs. And that's always been one of their very big pushes and impetus. So fast, I told you, this is like speed dating with Cindy. So the next thing that I want to do is move us a little bit more. And of course, we have planned some of this, but I want to tee you all up as you listen to these organizations, start putting your questions in chat. And we're gonna stop and pause. I'm gonna let them talk, share some background with you. Then we'll take a pause and take a few of your questions. Then we'll go to the next round. And as you can see, we've got a, a fast moving train that we're getting ready to board. And we've got three basic things we want to cover. The KM focus and the importance, why it's important to the organization what's on the horizon for these organizations, because we've grabbed them since May and we know they've been doing a lot since almost the beginning of November that's coming up. And then to try to let them look into their future ball and tell us what they're seeing from business and industry trends. So we're gonna start our round robin. You guys get your questions together. And Padma, if I may, I'd like to start with you and just let you give us a, a few minutes of what Emphasis has been up to and focused on and why it's important to the organization. Padma, take it away. Thank you so much and a very good morning, good evening uh, to everyone who's joined the call. Um, you know, it's a privilege for me to talk about uh, the entire concept of knowledge management or we now term it as organization learning in the context of Emphasis. Uh, because for us, this has been a journey from as early as 1998, uh, when the founders came together and said, in order to ensure that we know what's happening in the organization, in order to ensure that we deliver nothing but the best for our clients, we need to also ensure that both the tribal knowledge and the way we put it, the tacit knowledge has to be codified, has to be made available to everyone. Uh, so that's what really started our entire knowledge management and knowledge sharing journey at Infosys. And as we grew both in size, stature and complexity of business, I think it became even more important for us to ensure that we do not lose focus on what really these elements are bringing to the fore and how we are actually able to deliver and move up the value chain for what the clients need. Now, having said that, it's therefore important for us to identify the core elements and stay true to those, them being people, process, technology, which are being powered by content, and of course, with a very strong governance structure as well. Now, 
ever since we looked at the changing dynamics of the entire employee population, and here I'm talking about an entire spectrum which moves from 24 years of probably an age uh, uh, to people with 30 years of work experience, we really need to see what really is binding them together. And of course, in this day and age when uh, Netflix is the coolest thing that's happening around after the Ubers are driving us through, I think it's important for us to understand that anything and everything which is digital uh, is fast becoming an integral part of our life. And why should something as commonplace and yet so strategic as KM on organization learning be away from it? So which is why we looked at our entire program and we literally elevated it from not just being mere knowledge sharing, but to a level that we say it is an entire organization which is at the learning desk and started looking at how can our platform become far more sentient. And, and that's something that we are going through now as well, an entire transformation process, which will ensure that the organization is far more responsive or the term that we use is sentient and become a live enterprise. Towards this, we ensured that not just a, a revamp of the way knowledge was being shared or collected, but even the way we started engaging with the individuals was very important. So we rehashed all the available uh, you know, touch points for the employees, brought in a perspective of making it extremely convenient to them to access this particular platform on which the knowledge was being made available and not just made available for uh, you know in, in terms of codified knowledge but a lot of data and information which was being pumped in from our internal systems as well it was also important for us to not just look at the activity metrics of adoption or how many people have actually come in and consumed or contributed to this platform but probably uh, i would say a little before may as well uh, we started looking at how do we make it matter for the important work communities which for us are our client teams how do we make it matter to them how do we look at what are their key objectives and really stitch this entire knowledge sharing element into it so that they are able to go ahead and articulate um, the kind of objectives that the client would want them to solve and get to so therefore in a nutshell What's really been keeping us busy is to constantly see, scan the horizon as to what more is happening in the digital transformation or in the disruption that would be happening at our client's end. And also what's important for us to continue to be relevant in these kind of tectonic changes, which are you know, not only just impacting the technology sector, but across all domains as well. And what's also very keen for us is to ensure that the people element is never missed out. Um, we, we, with all due respect to technology, it really is cool. It really makes so many things possible. But at the heart of it, it is about people. It is about ensuring that we are able to recognize their contribution. More than recognize if you're able to celebrate all the contributions that they make, that is going to allow us to ensure that more knowledge is being shared and a lot more people get comfortable to be honest with what they know and most importantly be open in order to ask questions so that really has been keeping us busy cindy and everyone padma that that's the, when you said that's it in a nutshell that's a large nut to crack wow you guys i think are really getting to the heart of the teachable moment padma that's so exciting and thank you for sharing that with us let's keep going i'd love to hear um Sana, may i uh, call on you next to Give us a little background on what you've been focused on and why it's important to the IRS. Hi, Cindy, and thanks for including us. We're, we're excited to be here. And I'd like to start with our brief SKM site overview video. Um, that will give everyone an idea of the scope of our program and set the context for some of our recent activity and our, and our future plans. Wonderful, so here it is. I'm gonna tee this up for you, Sana. Oops, I'm not hearing the audio. Is it coming through now? No. 
Okay, well, we'll just, I don't even know that it's moving. Is okay. it stuck? Uh, no, so no, hang on just a minute. It's playing on our it's end. It's playing on our end. We're not hearing it, though, for some reason. Let me, huh? Uh-huh. Just a minute. Let me, so now I'm going to let them look at this for a minute. We're going to see if we can get a, give us a second with our technology, everyone. <laughs> See if we can get that volume up. Sana, did you hear that? Let's try it again. All the good. How's that, Sana? Are you hearing that? Sana, were you able to hear that? I'm sorry, I was talking with the mute on. <laughs> I'll just speak over um, what we're seeing because I'm not hearing audio on this end. Okay. But on the left hand, this is our homepage for the service-wide knowledge management site. Um, to the left, you'll see the knowledge management links to some um, more frequent sites that people need to get to when they come here. Um, across the top, You'll see our KM Home, our links to the tabs to the virtual library, our shots, video library, self-help, online tutorials, our communities of practice, lessons learned, our IRS learning portal, knowledge capture, coaching and mentoring, and then back to our IRS um, homepage. And I think it is fr frozen because it's not doing anything on this and it should have moved on way before now. Okay. See, how's that now? Okay, now it's moving. It's now showing the links that I talked about earlier. Yes. And then our carousel, which we update regularly to let people know about the new things that are happening with service-wide knowledge management. We have links to frequently asked questions and an option for people to provide feedback on the site. And then the links to our different services as mentioned previously. Now we're going to look at our virtual library. This is the home page of the virtual library. It's um, built to allow people, employees, to do their day-to-day -day jobs. We have now moved on to the SHOTS library, where we have the self-help tutorials. <laughs> there are over 350 videos currently in the library, very short videos. Our communities of practice site helps people set up new communities of practice, manage them. We provide space on the site for them to build out um, their separate um, areas and other tools. We have the learning portal, which is a one-stop shop for, oh, sorry, lessons learned, where we're helping people to build a repository from those learned lessons. Our IRS learning portal, which is the one-stop shop for all things learning at the IRS. That's undergoing a change now with a new learning system we've just developed or acquired. Our knowledge capture site, which is a resource site um, for capturing the knowledge that people have so that we can then disseminate it. We have coaching and mentoring sites. Again, those are mainly resource sites for those men involved in coaching and mentoring. And then the link back to the IRS source home, which is our IRS homepage. I believe we're talking here about our four pillars, connect, share, learn, and improve. Mm -hmm. And those are the four pillars that we use to represent all of the activity within SKM or service-wide knowledge management. Sanab, this is Cindy. I think that you probably did as good or not better job of the gentleman who's actually talking this. So thank you <laughs> for taking me no, Ke that. I, it's, Kelly does an excellent job, but thank you for the compliment. <laughs> it's such an amazing piece of work. So say a little bit more about just so it's there. You guys had this in May. 
what do you continue just to enhance give the, give the audience a little insight of what you've been up to since may sure um the the main thing the overarching thing is driving adoption since the conference our team has led initiatives to raise awareness build buy-in and advance the service-wide knowledge management program through things like our um, hosting our fourth annual IRS executive KM summit we use that to engage and build executive champions um, partnering with our business units to deliver KM content within onboarding classes continuing professional education courses our executive candidate development program and what we call KM 101 meetings we're starting to work with a group of KM business unit representatives to further integrate knowledge management into the business. Um, there's that KM is a shared responsibility that was mentioned earlier. And we're very proud that we recently received the 2019 IRS Commissioner's Award, um, which oh, wow. is the highest internal honor. And we, of course, shared that with the 17 business unit partners that we have um, across the agency. We're continuing to develop an, our three-year strategic plan, now covering 20 through 22. Yes. But the biggest news is that we are hiring additional staff members to expand our outreach efforts and support new solutions and initiatives. Our mighty team, small but mighty team of about five, has now expanded to over 30 within a month. Wow. <laughs> so those growing pains are, are are going on right now, but we are so excited to have all these new people on to help us in this effort to drive the adoption of KM throughout the service. And then we're continuing our external outreach, most recently with our presentation at the National Security Agency's KM Destination Excellence Conference. Wow, Sana, of course, I'm the only one that's getting filmed on this thing. And <laughs> y'all my jaw drop when she said they went from five to 30. I didn't know that. I hope. Yes, over 30, actually, yeah. Oh, my gosh, Sana, that congratulations. So somebody's seeing some value really big time. At, at the highest levels, as you can tell from the IRS Commissioner's Award and wow. the authorization to hire all these new people. We are beyond thrilled. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. Boy, is that a, that's a feather in your cap. Congratulations to you and Larry and the whole team. Thanks. And I did, I, if I have just a second more, yeah. I didn't want to leave out our work with metrics and dashboards Please. because yeah. numbers That's do important. matter. <laughs> that is important. Say a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And since the conference, our technical team has developed a dashboard to quickly display some specific program data. And we're currently testing those dashboards internally and ensuring that all our historical data is accurate before we begin user testing next month. So these dashboards will enhance the data-driven decision-making and help our KM teams to course correct based on the data changes and trends. And some of the things that we're initially tracking are the simpler things like the number of views and users on different SKM sites, the number of participants attending KM training, the number of registered communities of practice, the number of videos in our shots library and um, the number of projects that we have under development need those new knowledge bases or new shots videos but we're looking forward to that expansion oh Sanad, that you know what it's game changing my experience has been when you start doing that and as lumberjay says by the numbers because all those activities start really mattering when you can start linking them creating hypotheses and getting the data back to showing how it impacts the business. It's phenomenal. Exactly. Wow. She didn't tell us all of this. We've been prepping and prepping. She has saved a few punchlines. So wow. <laughs> congratulations. Thanks for sharing all of that. Alan, I know you can rise to the occasion. Tell us what you guys at Slumber <laughs> because I know it never stops over there. That's, you're, you're too kind. Thank you so much, Cindy. Uh, so first of all, a big thank you again for recognizing Schlumberger this year in your awards. Thank you. And uh, thank you for inviting us to this, uh, this call as well. So what I'm about to say, actually, I think complements what uh, Padma and Sanaa were saying quite well as well. So 
We've been doing knowledge management for more than 20 years, a long time in the organization. And like most companies, we've built up a really rich and sometimes confusing landscape of knowledge management, resources, assets, applications, initiatives, you name it, we've got it. And just this week, actually, I was listening to another organization doing a presentation and they were talking about their learning resources that they had inside that particular company. And they showed a slide that had the classical pie chart and there must have been 30, maybe 40 different resources they had just inside that one organization. And I thought, yeah, that's uh, something that's quite familiar for us. We've been doing it such a long time. We create new things and we forget to switch the old ones off. So something that we've been doing in Schlumberger this year, it actually started last year, but we've only launched it since the conference uh, earlier on this year, Cindy, is that we've deployed a knowledge management map, a kind of a mind map or a catalog of resources to help people wow. know where all the stuff is. It might sound super simple, but you, you can have the best knowledge management program in the world. If people don't know where stuff is, they're lost and you've got no value. So like many companies, like many organizations, we've got global initiatives, local initiatives, regional initiatives, functional initiatives, all of these things together. And so what we've tried to do is create a map which shows people which resources and which applications help them best at certain times and really the why. The why, why is this one better than that one for you? And of course, it all comes down to the detail, the devil's in the detail. So. A particular application may be fantastic for one person, but not for somebody else because they're in a different function and so on. So we've got people uh, in our organization in Schlumberger, people in engineering, manufacturing, research, design, operations and functional units like many other companies. And what we've tried to do is to take our knowledge management assets, mm -hmm. our resources, our applications, and then show people how each one of them can allow people to connect with other people, and I saw the connect word come up in Sana's presentation just there, how people can learn, not just from documentation, but learn from each other, yes. how they can solve challenges, how they can either solve them independently or come together as units to, to solve things, how they can get specific questions answered and where to ask them. It's no point just start, you know, the right question in the wrong place, we won't get an answer. And then we've got specific initiatives. Well, we've always had these initiatives, but we needed to help explain to people again about this. We can't take it for granted that everybody knows all of this uh, about specific programs we have to recognize the contribution. It's very important, as Sana said as well, to make sure that people are recognized for the work that they're doing and how we can inspire them to innovate and support each other. So it's very easy probably for everyone on this call to know what knowledge management is or at least we have our own version of it to understand it to explain when we speak to people one-on-one -on -one. but most people never have that opportunity so if someone's got a challenge and they're based in time zone x and i'm asleep and they can't speak to the right people where do they go so we need to have some other way of explaining to people where they can get the support at the right time um, so we had lots of global campaigns this summer. You asked us what have we done since the uh, last conference, but we wanted it not to, to just be a single campaign. We wanted it to be something that's going to live forever. So we've enlisted uh, a lot of champions, as you always do with such uh, initiatives, um, and it's all about raising awareness, but not just this summer or this year, but making sure we're going to keep it going for all time, basically, uh, making sure it's always staying fresh. Um, so we have these knowledge management champions um, to spread this awareness and they're going to start talking to newcomers who come on board and uh, existing people just to make sure we sustain that awareness because we have got good programs but unless they're being used we're not getting much uh, value out of it. So that's uh, one big thing. The second big thing I'm just going to tease you about a little bit because I can't give you too much more detail oh, but yeah. it's switching that entire focus externally and it's interesting what Sana was saying as well. So how do we maximize this benefit of knowledge management that we've got inside the company externally? How do we tell the stories to new recruits? How do we make sure that our customers know about the depth of experience and knowledge that they got uh, inside Schlumberger? We've been doing the, the marketing side of that for a long time. However, we're going to try and tell it in a different uh, storyboard, I think, in the future. So that's what we've been up to. I think that's, well, and I want to remind everyone, you've heard from these three, 
it's only, it's been less than six months since we talked to them. So they're doing a lot. You guys don't, don't ever stop. Alan, one comment that I love, I've done mind maps all my life. We've done them for so many different things, themes. I've never thought about using it to showcase resources, how you get there, the paths to them. That's, that's just brilliant. I love it. Thank you. It's uh, it's already proving a lot of value and success, and people like the uh, imagery that we've got together to try and explain to people where do you go when you need help for X, and where do you go when you need help for Y. Absolutely. Okay, so look, I've held this audience off long enough. I know um, Zakia has said they have lots of questions, so if you guys don't mind, we're going to take a few of these, and then we're going to go. We're going to do a little futurist thinking in a few minutes. Go ahead, Zakia. So the first question is for Padma. Okay. How do you re recognize contributions? Is it based on content, quantity, et cetera, um, or is it something else? Padma? Um, thank you for this question. Um, I think I would want to start off by saying uh, we should recognize that different folks, different strokes. Um, so when we are looking at recognizing contribution to the organization learning, uh, we need to bear in mind uh, multiple facets. Of course, contribution of content is very critical, but also we need to uh, you know, have a benchmark uh, to appreciate what kind of content is coming in, what's the kind of effort that has been invested, because that will allow us to bring in best-in-class content from the subject matter experts who are creating it and therefore set the trend for the others to even raise the bar subsequently. It's also important for us uh, to recognize consumption of the content because if everyone was creating and nobody was consuming it, uh, then obviously we have a problem at hand there as well. And when we are looking at consumption, it's important for us to initially, uh, in order to get the entire momentum going, um, have a lot of gamification. In fact, the platform recognizes consumption both in terms of the quantity of content that is consumed and the time that they spend on the platform. Because sometimes if you need to go through an entire case study or if you have to even learn machine learning, uh, which is a 244 hours course with us while you're interacting with subject matter experts, you need to have that kind of time invested. So when we are looking at recognition, it's extremely important for us, number one, to see the effort that has been spent, um, the kind of return on investment that the respective teams would gather. But most importantly, it is also the nature of recognition that should be given. Because in my opinion, um, if you're looking at recognizing senior leadership, then you need to give them something which is going to egg them and make them feel so much more happier for the kind of leadership efforts that they have taken. And at the other end of the spectrum, for someone who's starting off, uh, you know, recognizing them with a cool gadget, you know, having their photographs sprayed across the organization, giving them an opportunity uh, to probably have a tete-a-tete -tete with the leadership is another way that will go as a good investment in order to help them set the, you know, a be a role model for knowledge sharing in future. So never a dull moment even to figure out what kind of recognition will work best for different communities. Very good. Thank you, Padma. Another question. So now this one's for you. Um, how do you capture knowledge and how do you encourage people to do so? Uh, well, I, I have it uh, easy on this one because but, as an organization. Oh, Padma, I'm sorry. That was for Sanaa, but we'll come oh, back. Sorry. To you. No, yeah. hold on to that. We'll let Sanaa go and we'll come back to you. I'd like for you guys to have a conversation. Uh, we have a... Um, a few different methods. Um, we're, we're starting to expand our knowledge capture um, offering mm -hmm. this year, but um, we have lessons learned after action reviews, um, knowledge mapping, capturing, interviewing SMEs and capturing that information and placing it in the virtual library. We have participation in communities of practice. So we have a variety of methods and we're starting to hone in on those methods and develop some um, new ones and more resources for capturing that this year. Yeah. 
So now I was going to say, I'm assuming some of your team is going to be, will facilitate and enable that, the, the, your added resources, or will you? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, we're building out that program and we'll also be developing a cadre of people within the business units that can help with knowledge capture so that we can be more of the consultants and they can help facilitate the actual activities. Very good. Thank you. We, Padma, hold on to that thought because we've got so many questions. So you want to take one we more? Do. Let's take one more and then we'll come back yeah, to these. Absolutely. Um, um, so the next question is for any presenter. Okay. How have your KM processes helped with large organizational changes? Alan, why don't you take that? We want to hear your voice again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. With, with large organization change, one area that I'm going to talk about a little bit, we I think we brought it up in the actual conference as well, was to do with uh, mergers and acquisitions. So that's one yeah. element of organizational change, but we found that particularly helpful. Um, so with large organizations, when they merge, when they acquire, things like that, there can be a lot of pain for people going through those uh, changes and we found that our communities of practice and the knowledge management opportunities um, allow subject matter experts to talk to other subject matter, excuse me, subject matter experts without necessarily sort of getting all of the tangled lines of reporting and things like that. So it's a great opportunity and a nice welcoming way of getting people from one company onto another. So that's just one aspect of it that we found very valuable, knowledge management with mergers and acquisitions. Very good. Any other, um, Padma, any add, added thoughts you would have? No, actually, Alan has kind of summarized it for us. You know, uh, again, I would just want to say that never a dull moment in these kind of scenarios, because I think what keeps us busy is to constantly keep checking uh, what's happening on the ground and respond to it and not react. Uh, I think that would be the mantra for us. Yes. You guys, I'm capturing a lot of words you all are using. I'll do I'm going to do a wordle at the end of this. It's very good. Okay, do we have one more to take? We do. We have yeah. several more. Let's, let's, let's do at least one more and then we'll, we've got time. We'll get into some futuristic things. Let me find a good one. Okay. Um, let's see. Question for Sanai. Do you have any suggestions or tips for how someone working in a large government agency would introduce the concept of knowledge management to staff and leadership? Okay, Sanai, this is somebody just getting started and trying to get it off the ground. What do you suggest? Oh, that's a good one. And, you know, we've had that question from a couple of agencies. We've done some knowledge yeah. sharing sessions with them. So we'd be happy um, to continue with other agencies. So reach out to me. Um, but just quickly in a nutshell, when we started our effort, we brought in what we call the KMAC, the Knowledge Management Advisory Council, which is um, composed of executives from each of our business units to help us build out the program. You know, what are your needs? What can help satisfy those needs? We could see how knowledge management would help um, fit those needs. So I first suggest, you know, having your um, your executives involved very early in the process so they know that it's with their efforts that this is being built, not something that's being built for them. Um, and ground roots efforts always help too. If you can get your frontline employees hooked on any of your offerings, those little small wins, that's going to trickle up and make an impact on, on management. Very nice. Thank you, guys. So, Sanaa, let's just stay with you. I'm going I'm to take us to the next question, and we're going to come back to um, – we're going to come back to some of these. So you guys, we have other questions, but keep putting them in there. And I will promise you, we'll go through all of these at the end and make sure that if we can't get them to on this call, the key is not in, we will make sure we get some responses back for you. So, so now look, I don't want you guys to look too far out, but you've already talked about, we've got 25 new resources. We've got all this going on. So what will you be doing over the next year, year and a half? What, what's the plan? Sure. Um, in the interest of time, I'll keep this short and sweet. We are in the process of finalizing those FY20 objectives, but we know for sure that our driving adoption efforts will continue and we'll be expanding our list of partners and continue supporting those early adopters. And then other priorities include 
enhancing our lessons learned repository and associated resources and tools, um, an enhancement of our KM performance dashboards, of course, and expanding our knowledge capture program. And then finally, search result enhancement. Aww. Those are the big things on our radar. Gotcha. Alan, you've already teased us and said, I can't tell you all, so you know we're going to be waiting to hear this when you can, but what else is on, what will you continue working on in the next 12, 18 months? Sure. So here's a general statement. Everybody, everybody on this call, everybody in the world, we're all overwhelmed with too much stuff yeah. there you go. <laughs> at, at work and outside work. And there's too many channels open for communication things. So one of our big goals is to reduce the number of channels that we have inside the company. We've got so many different ways of communicating and things like that. Fantastic, and we know we embrace them all. We're, we're completely on board, but we want to try and make them a bit more of a singular point so people have less places to go to look for stuff. And you know, it's, it's especially true, in fact, I suppose it's never been easier this, these days with a sort of modern software for everybody to spin up and create websites and communities. And unintentionally, they actually may not be helping the bigger picture of KM. Yes. Um, so, you know, I guess things like Duplicate sites and groups are possibly the most sort of common offenders. Uh, and I think it's often very unintentional. Um, people don't realize the value of the knowledge that they do have, and they don't realize that it can be spread a lot further. So a lot of it's about education on, you know, let's not always create a new group because it's Monday, um, but it's good to share and when not to create silos. So that's our next kind of couple of years goal. Very good. You know, Padma kind of said the same thing, Alan, just to tie what you both said in terms of um, really trying to get everybody to recognize that they, they can be a contributor. It's almost like the individualization of KM, but yet your, your tools and systems and approaches give you that simplicity and the globalness of getting your message out there. Is that, did I summarize that right and how you, you are thinking about it? That's certainly part of it, yes. Um, and I think just being a little bit more careful in terms of how we use all of the tools, because you know there's been a lot of uh, a lot of proliferation of new tools in the last five years, and I I think that yeah they're great and they're shiny and they're cool, but they don't always help in the way that people think they're going to help. So there's a lot of work there. I think we need to do that. Yeah, and I I'm just going to tell this entire audience: these three organisations have very strong um, process governance is behind all these great things that they're doing with the tools and the approaches. So just a word to the wise. Padma, build on this. You keep saying there's never a dull moment. So what's going to keep you even busier over the next 12 to 18 months? Well, um, you know, for all the conversations around digital, uh, you know, it's, it's like a cacophony out there. Uh, yeah. But I think in the very near kind of a short term for us would be to reach out to all the digital monks in the organization and, you know, um, get them hooked on to uh, the platform, get them hooked on to this way of ensuring that you can reach out to people, uh, you know, from yeah. India to the world and from the world back to where we are. So as a global organization, it's important for us to bring everyone in the fold. But I think if, if I were to stretch this horizon and, and, you know, really, it's a summary of what both Sana and Alan have been sharing. It is about ensuring that we simplify. And I think the most critical task and the most difficult task anywhere is to simplify. The more we are able to simplify this effort, I think the more we'll get under the skin of business. Um, and I'm going to go back to uh, the slide that you shared. Our focus also has to be to continue to measure to matter. So telemetry analytics has to be really so well in, you know, ingrained in everything that we do that. And again, the more simple it is, uh, the more integral it will be for everyone. Uh, so it's really easier said than done, but it has to be a very well orchestrated conversation between the technology teams that are developing these platform solutions, and most importantly, the business folks um, who will give us the complex problems, which we then have to simplify and integrate uh, with the kind of solutions that we are looking at. 
Very nice. Very nice. I know we have a few more questions, Akia. Let's take those because okay. we, we'll do the trends quickly. Perfect. Um, Sana, we'll go through. Um, this is for Sana. Yes, it okay, is. Okay, Sana, we're starting with you. Yes. Um, what application did you use to create your KM site? Our KM program is totally SharePoint based um, because that's our internal platform. So everything is SharePoint. Most of it, well, some of it out of the box, some has been customized. Very good. Looks good. So, okay, all you SharePointers, it can look good, be interactive. And I'm just going to go down our list. Yeah, do. Um, so, so, now this is another one for you. Can you describe how you're organizing those 30 new <laughs> what are they gonna resources do? you have? She said they're going to <laughs> Yes. That's a very good question. We are organizing them in into three big areas of programs, those items that you saw across the top tabs on our webpage, um, virtual library, community practice, et cetera. Um, our technical support, so our SharePoint support, those kinds of people, and then communications and strategy kinds of efforts. Very good. Okay, very good. Alan, this one's for you. Um, the mind maps that you had talked about oh, yeah. earlier, uh, curious to know what format those are in. And what yeah, good, good, good question. It's not, it's not as uh, complex, luckily, as a mind map. <laughs> it doesn't have all of the branches. Uh, it's just a visual thing. Um, so we have six pillars, uh, similar to the four pillars that I think that Sana was mentioning actually earlier on. And depending upon your sort of outcome, so you, if you're wanting to connect with people, well, that's likely to be your communities of practice, and then that will direct you through that. If you're looking for a specific answer, that's looking for where we, uh, solve area, so that will direct you to whichever platform is applicable for you, because if you're in engineering, uh, going back to my earlier comments, we have different platforms for different populations. So if you're in engineering, you might go to platform A. If you're in manufacturing, you might go to platform B. Uh, I'm using the word platform software interchangeably there. So we've tried to keep it really, really simple. That's, uh, I think, <laughs> that might be our mantra for you, Cindy. That, I love it, Alan. I, I, everybody's going there. So it doesn't matter if it's organic or, submit or structured. It, it points you to where you need to go. That, that's right, and it and it'll evolve. So we we tried um, we tried to boil the ocean, and that didn't work. So oh. we came back and just focused on what was important and what was to start with, at least the global elements. And we pointed people to the you know the big ticket items, and then we're going to start evolving that as time goes on. Love it, love it. Okay. So there's one I'm going to skip because I think we're going to get into this oh, we're um, get to in it. our okay. next section um, around digital transformation, but we'll skip that one for now. Okay. Padma, this is for you. Um, do you have monitoring and evaluation in place for, K, for your KM program? What is the value add or lessons learned in incorporating monitoring and evaluation tools for your KM? Uh, well, when we started this journey uh, early on, uh, we did have a lot of those, uh, you know, kind of uh, tools and thought processes in place. Uh, but today, I think uh, the way we are uh, evolving this entire conversation in the organization is to flip it and, and kind of see it from a perspective of business uh, impact. And, you know, the, the business impact can, of course, be varied. Um, you know, happy to have a, a conversation to showcase uh, what our measures are as well, um, and really, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of showcase the evolution that we have seen um, in order to ensure that we continue to be relevant to what kind of business needs are there. And I have a feeling that this is largely to do with the kind of uh, domain and the business sector that we are in of, uh, you know, consulting, technology consulting, technology software solutions. Um, so that would be a tad bit different and, um, again, very, very relevant to what each client has that we, you know, go ahead and engage with. Very good. Thank you, Padman. Uh, I told Zakia when we started this that we needed, you know, hours. three hours <laughs> with them. I know. I'm sorry. So, look, um, let, I want you all to hit on this business and industry trends that, you know, what do you see? What's happening now? What do you see coming? We always look for that at APQC. And we've just had several questions about, well, pick up where is digital transformation going to continue to be 
a trend carrying us into next year and maybe beyond the next couple of years. So you guys, um, why don't, Alan, why don't we start with you on the business and industry trends? What are you seeing? And yeah, give us some sure, answers. sure. Yeah, so we're we're heavily on board with this digital transformation, as you probably are not surprised at all, Cindy. Uh, one of the areas I think that's particularly interesting when you look at digital transformation and when you look at knowledge management, and the biggest intersect area I think is expertise and expertise location using AI or IA. Um, you can choose whichever you want to say if it's artificial intelligence or intelligent automa automation. I think it's more intelligent automation at this sort of stage. Um, so the sort of things we can do I, it's to use this intelligent automation to look for patterns that I guess we don't see as human beings because there's just too much data. Yeah. So that's where I think there's a big opportunity to use IA in terms of helping our expertise location coming up in the next uh, number of years. Um, so we have actually started doing this already. Uh, we've got tons of data, petabytes of data we could look at, yeah. um, to look at these patterns that simply sort of fall outside the standard taxonomy of, you know, you're an SME and XYZ and things like that. So we are looking at services right now to look for those patterns in the profile and the content and the discussions and things like that. Just as an FYI, we are not mining any email. Uh, we're not going down that path. Some people do, we're not. But yeah. uh, that's just where we are. Um, so that's our big, one of our big areas where I think uh, the digital transformation can help knowledge management. I love it. And, and Alan, you just said it, I think, just to make sure we're clear, KM is going to take this on at Slumberjay, right? You guys are going to help with it or enable it. Uh, we're definitely on board with it, yes. Okay, got it. Great. Padma, give us quickly, what do you see as a trend that we all need to pay attention to? Well, at the heart of it, it's all about talent transformation. We are talking about reskilling, you know, whether it's about pushing the frontiers of 5G or looking at the next thing in additive manufacturing, if you will. Uh, but at, at the heart of it all, it is about the talent and it is about helping them move from point A to point B um, with the least amount of resistance and a maximum amount of ecosystem support. So in a nutshell, uh, the way we would want to put it in from an emphasis perspective, it is about being having the Z-shaped skills where you learn, unlearn and relearn. So being adaptive, ensuring that you bring that kind of an attitude uh, to work every day. Uh, well, well, that's going to be a very interesting story uh, for all of us to have a watch on. Oh, I love that, Padma. I wrote that down. I love it. Okay, Sanal, what do you see? What's, what's trending and what you see? Well, very similar to um, both Padma and um, Alan's comments. We are researching how we can get started with some robotic process automation, artificial intelligence. I like the IA um, that Alan mentioned and other advanced automation technologies. We have some things going on within the service. Our ID department has a chat box that they've um, developed called Winnie to answer frequently asked questions about a software upgrade that we recently had. But we're trying to expand in that area. I liked APQC's white paper on skills for the digital workforce. And while we're developing or, or researching those opportunities within the service, we also need to work on making sure we have a plan for the, developing the skills mentioned in that white paper, consulting, strategic pro problem solving, deep thinking, and technical and analytics fluency. So that's our big push is getting into that area more. Well, you guys, this is huge, guys. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And you all are obviously on top of it all. Look, I don't know. We're we're at the end of our hour. I don't know how it goes by this quickly. Look, I want to just point out a couple of things to you all. Um, and I thought this was kind of a nice um, way to think about our waves that come with this and what KM tries to do to make people feel a little bit more comforted. You heard about when you listen to these organizations that have joined me today, they use words like inspire, understanding, recognition, feel better, feel happier, responsive, needs met, small, um, reduce the complexity. I mean, that's, that's what you aspire to. And you guys have truly hit what our vision have, has been for, for so many years. And I just am very grateful to have you guys 
as part of our panel discussion today. Thank you, Padma, Sanaa, and Alan so very much. And thank you for having us. You're welcome. We, I hate thank to you. tell you we may get a repeat performance from you all. So be careful. I'll have to I'll have to go talk to their agents. I'm telling yeah. you all this. So look, all we have a lot that um, you'll obviously be getting a lot all of this information, including the video that will not have Sanad's voice, but also has a very capable voice on it. We've um, sent you to a lot of resources around our report. For those of you who are future members of APQC, you can access these as well as members who then can are, um, access the white papers and articles. And I encourage you, we're always looking for opportunities to benchmark and have conversations. So please let us hear from you all. And we appreciate your time and look forward to the next conversation. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Padma. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Sanaa. Thank you.